Welcome back to our series on the Women of the Hispanic Society, where each month we feature a different woman who has worked for the museum and library as either a curator, researcher, librarian, or artist. May is National Photography Month, and today we're celebrating Ruth Matilda Anderson, a photographer who began working for the Hispanic Society in the early 1920s. Anderson's work is a critical component of the museum's collection, as it captures a moment in Spain's history before industrialization took over. Beyond each photograph's artistic appeal, Anderson's keen abilities permeate each image. We hope you enjoy learning more about this talented photographer's contributions to the Hispanic Society. Among the treasures of the Hispanic Society's photography collection, perhaps none stands out as much as the 14,000 photographs that Ruth Matilda Anderson took of Spain, Portugal, and Morocco in the 1920s. Considered as a whole, these vivid pictures offer a striking record of how people lived then. Anderson recorded a timeless Spain found principally in small towns and rural regions. There, she concentrated on old buildings, local industries, and the community's public life, generally at festivals or religious rites. Significantly, she limited herself to those aspects of the individual's life carried out in public, such as collecting water at a well, whitewashing a house, or the exercise of a profession. Stylistically, her pictures present these daily events with a straightforward tranquility, while also suggesting an effortless naturalism. As she traveled through Galicia, Asturias, Extremadura, and León, she created a vivid image of Spain, filled with the people who had gladly stopped what they were doing to explain their trades and customs to her. These included fishermen in Galicia, people in taverns, children playing games, villagers and townsfolk celebrating religious holidays, and the cheerful throngs at markets and fairs. As she did this, she took pictures that evoke the spirit of these places, whether fishing towns of the northern coast of Spain or villages tucked away in the hills and mountains inland. Today, her work offers an invaluable resource for all who wish to learn about the country at this time. Born in Nebraska, Anderson received her first instruction in photography from her father, Alfred Theodore Anderson, who ran a studio in Kearney specializing in views and portraits. After going to college in Nebraska, she moved to New York City where she attended the Clarence H. White School for Photography from which she received a diploma in 1919. Two years after Anderson graduated from White School, the Hispanic Society of America hired her. She was working as an interior decorator when the secretary from the Clarence H. White School called to tell her that the Hispanic Society was looking for a photographer and Clarence White had recommended her. The museum immediately impressed her with its vision and daring as it seemed to capture the spirit of Spain. No less imposing was the man who guided it. As she recalled the first interview, he was tall with, quote, amused but keen eyes, end quote. He demanded excellence and hard work while admitting that it was all something of an experiment. Apparently, she satisfied him because he wondered if she could start the next day. Instead, they agreed she would begin the following week. When Anderson entered the Hispanic Society, it had been operating for more than a decade, yet it was still in its formative years. She particularly relished the opportunity to learn from Huntington. At the outset, she worked as the museum photographer, though Huntington shortly promoted her to curator of photography in 1922 when he added more staff. Then, in 1923, she traveled to Spain for the first time to take pictures for the museum. In the following years, she would make four further photographic expeditions in which she visited various regions of the country, some quite remote. On the first of these trips, Anderson's father accompanied her, supplying much-needed field experience when in 1930, Anderson returned from the last of her photographic expeditions, her career at the museum shifted yet again. Instead of overseeing photography, she now focused on the study of Spanish costume and published several books and articles on the subject. Finally, in 1954, she was named Curator of Costume at the Hispanic Society, a post she held until her retirement, almost 30 years later. Throughout her professional life, these trips and photographs played an important role. 
Not only had she acquired vital first-hand experience, but the images furnished essential primary material for her research. As important as her research in costume is today, however, we recognize the appeal of her photographs. When Anderson traveled into the heart of Spain to find her subjects, she was following the instructions of Huntington, a fact which makes her work such a key reflection of the Hispanic society's goals as he understood them. Huntington knew the major cities of his time and spent extended periods in Madrid and Seville, yet he believed that the real Spain existed outside of its urban centers. In fact, he developed a profound admiration for the rural regions which he visited. For him, they evinced a genuine image that differed sharply from that formed by many tourists who saw only the sentimentalized or cliched features of the country, and this was what he wanted the photography collection to record. To carry out this mission, Anderson ventured intrepidly into some of the remotest parts of Spain, whether it was Finisterre, literally the end of the earth, or the isolated region of Las Urdes in Extremadura. While much of her work entailed arduous travel, perhaps the one she and her father made on November 5th through 7th from Muros to Finisterre stands out for its difficulties. Today, one can drive the distance in a little over an hour, but for Anderson, it took two days with stops at Pindo and Se. From Muros, one could only reach Pindo on foot or by horse, so they hired a guide, his boy, and two horses. As they set off with the two horses, Anderson's father rode one while the other carried the luggage. When they came to the tidelands, they crossed at low tide, yet at one point there was a stream that rose to their knees. There, Ruth rode with the luggage while the man set his boy behind Anderson's father. Although the horses slipped in the water, the only casualty was their tripod, which Anderson's father fixed that evening in the fonda at Pindo. From there, they headed on to Se, hiring two women to carry their luggage on their heads as they proceeded to the ferry. In fact, the advantages of having one's own car were so great that they contemplated buying one of their own. Although Anderson did not do so on this trip, the Hispanic Society later bought one, and which they reconfigured for their purposes so that it became the body of a Fiat, the battery of a Chevrolet, and the chassis of a Ford. They affectionately called it Nuestra Señora de la Purísima Concepción, or Nuestra Señora for short, but it provided invaluable service as Anderson traveled more easily through the remotest parts of Spain. Admittedly, some places remained too remote even for their car, at which point they returned to mules. This dogged pursuit of subjects allowed Anderson to assemble a remarkable repertory of images. Along the way, however, many of the subjects she shot to record a trade or costume have almost taken on a life of their own to become portraits in their own right. Although taken to document a little girl carrying a metal milk can, the shot almost captures the spirit of an era. In another case, Anderson's picture of women and girls heading off to market now evokes their indomitable spirit carving out a livelihood in a formidable setting. In Extremadura, Anderson was documenting all aspects of the pig trade, so she went out to the fields. While she was photographing the swine herd for his costume, she recorded striking portraits of a father and son. Her painstaking approach made this possible. She approached her subjects, respectfully asking them about what they were doing and writing down their responses. In return, they gladly left off what they were doing to talk to her, and in the process, they relaxed so that she captured these images of remarkable spontaneity. Perhaps this is nowhere more apparent than in Montermoso, Extremadura, where Anderson visited Maxima Hernandez, a local artisan who made the prized straw hats of the town. Anderson, who had first seen such headgear in Soroya's painting, understood the importance of this article. Thus, she sought out Doña Maxima so that the hat maker could explain her craft, and as Doña Maxima relaxed and talked while working, Anderson made these remarkable images of a self-confident woman plying her trade. Scholars today agree that if you want to know what Galicia or Extremadura was like in the 1920s, you need to start with Anderson's work. That the Hispanic society holds an invaluable treasure that documents this world reflects the vision of Huntington when he founded the museum and the talent of the staff he hired. Above all, it attests to the tenacity and technique of the woman he sent through Spain in the 1920s.